What's going on guys? So today we're turning a little uh, fixed blade in its sheath. This is a uh, Boker Rambler, Boker Plus. Uh, this was uh, gifted to me during one of my uh, recent trades. I think it's a cool little knife and I wanted to carry it uh, around the neck. Now recently I did a video talking about uh, buying these um, ball chains for ceiling fans, the, basically the, uh, the fan pull or the pull for the lights <clears throat> from um, Home Depot. And uh, I want to go ahead and just give an example of how to do that. Just in case you didn't know, I mean, it should be pretty self-explanatory, but some of these things people don't know. So unless you see it, uh, how are you going to learn, right? So let's go ahead and take this out of this packaging. I have my uh, uh, Leatherman Wingman here. Now this is supposed to be what, 100? What was this? 100 and, or excuse me, yeah, 100. 100 feet, sure. No, 12 feet, 12 feet with the connector. <clears throat> now 12 feet will do plenty of these projects. All right, so it comes with one connector apparently. Let me go ahead and just double check that. So I'm thinking like, I don't know, at least four. This will make four different uh, necklaces for neck knives. Yeah, there's literally just one connector, so it is important to make sure you get the extra connectors if you're going to be doing multiple projects, or if you happen to be like, I don't know, 35 feet tall. <laughs> so one of those things. All right, so here's the uh, the very end <clears throat> with the connector on it. Now what I want to do is I want to loop this around my neck. Obviously, you're not going to see this part, but I'm going to loop it around so that the uh, bottom of the chain, once it's sitting on the back of my neck, the bottom of the chain can easily slip over my head, okay? This is a huge mistake I think a lot of people make when determining the size or length of a neck knife loop. Sometimes you want it to sit high on the neck, but then you realize later that it literally doesn't fit over your head. All right, so what I'm gonna do is off screen here for a second, just kind of hold this up, make a loop, pinch the loop. Now, I, you know, I've done this dozens of times, so I have more of an idea what it's gonna be like. But after I pinch the loop, I wanna literally pull this over my head without releasing it, and there you go. All right, so that's the length that I want. Let me go ahead and get this back on the table here. Because it fell off, hold on. We have the whole little bundle here on the floor. Okay, so I'm still pinching the other uh, loop here. So you wanna measure how long you want this. Then you have to cut it. All right, now you can use a pair of scissors for this. I like using multi-tools. All right, plier multi-tools. There's usually a wire cutter. And this works fantastic for this. So you want to slip it in here. All right, in between two of the individual balls, you can see there's a link there. I'll go ahead and zoom in so you can see that better. All right, so there's in between each individual ball, there's a, a link. And it allows it to slide in and out, allows this to be, you know, somewhat flexible so it can, you know, move around freely. And all you got to do is squeeze that link. All right, let me put this a little higher. There we go. It was in that little channel on the bottom for the crimper there we go so that's the cut very simple to do go ahead and back this back out all right in this case this has a belt loop on the back so go ahead and slip that through the loop here all right bring it up and connect it with the connector all right if you haven't done this before basically let me show you this again close up a lot of people do this kind of stuff, but some people don't. That's why I make these videos, you know. Some people think that this is silly or a waste of time that people know this stuff, but not everyone knows this stuff. So you want to take the little ball, slip it in the channel here, okay, and then you're going to basically push backwards. You're going to hear a little snap. It already obviously snapped in there, and now this is connected. All right, in the case of neck knives, a lot of times I like putting this connection piece um, down inside or behind the sheet itself. So there you go. So now I have, oh, it slipped out, not that it's a big deal. But there is the, the necklace for this neck knife. So we'll go ahead and uh, try this on real quick. See what it's like. Slip it over the head, which it slips over easily. This is hanging down totally fine. It's in a good place on the neck. You can easily access that knife, put it back in the sheath. I think this is gonna work out just fine as a neck knife. Uh, more specifically, because even though this is a smaller knife, it's important that if you're going to carry like a, a belt style knife around the neck, a small one like this, that the sheath houses a lot of that handle, okay? Because you want it to be secure. If you happen to bend over and this thing flops like this, 
you don't want this to easily fall out, okay? If this is a knife that's going to easily fall out of the sheath, it's not going to work out, okay? This will get banged around, rotated, and maybe even go upside down if you're bending over to pick something up or tie your shoes or whatever the case is. Um, so in this particular case, the sheath does house a lot of that handle, and it's kind of pressure fit. Like, it's not, it doesn't snap in at all, obviously, it's just a sheath, but it takes a little bit of force to get that to pop out, okay? So as you're pushing this in, the back of the sheath here kind of holds the handle a little bit, all right? So it is kind of a snug fit, which is going to work out fine as a neck knife. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to make a quick video of that um, to not only mention that if you do end up getting this, the, the much longer piece, to make sure you get these extra connectors because as you cut this into you know multiple uh, necklaces, um, obviously you want to be able to connect them because it only comes with one, all right? Which is kind of silly because even for a ceiling fan, like let's say you have the ceiling fan light combo, which a lot of them are, uh, you would still have two poles. So I don't know, this should, this should at least come with two connectors, but I'm only seeing the one here, unless I'm missing something. There's only one. So there, there technically should be one on either side. Then you can go ahead and cut the length that you want and have those to connect to both, um, you know, for extensions or something. If you happen to have a ceiling fan, like for example, in my living room, I have vaulted ceilings. So my ceiling above me right now is probably 13 or 14 feet. And my ceiling fan that has uh, lights connected to it, I have drop down poles so that I can literally stand there, reach up and, and turn those on and off if I need to. And those, uh, the actual line that's coming down here, the chain is probably, uh, I wanna say, I'm looking at it right now, maybe three and a half feet, four feet. And looking at it here, there's three or four connectors because originally I didn't have a long one like this. In fact, looking at my fan, I might go ahead and just replace that. But anyway, long story short, <laughs> that is how you do it. It's really simple. You can use wire cutters. Uh, they're on a multi-tool, dedicated wire cutters. A decent pair of scissors are going to snip through that as well. This is not very hard material, okay? Um, so you don't have to really worry about, like, you know, damaging things. I wouldn't use a knife. I don't take a knife blade and do that. You do want to actually cut it with some kind of a, a tool like that. Um, and then you're good to go. You get the length you want, and that's what it is. So although uh, Home Depot might not be the cheapest source for these uh, ball and chain uh, poles, which you can use, obviously, as a necklace, um, you can probably find them on Amazon, eBay, cheaper, who knows, but you know, there's a lot of Home Depots and Lowe's and hardware stores all around uh, America and all around the world. So, or at least there's hardware stores around the world. I don't know if those particular uh, brands happen to be outside the U.S. Um, but yeah, it's just a good idea. Just a, an easy access. Just go anywhere that they sell lighting stuff. You know, if you can walk into a store, a department store or something in their lighting section, they may have things like this extra chain poles for, uh, for fans, ceiling fans. So that is all. Just want to share that with you guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. Big question for today. If you carry a neck knife, do you prefer a metal bowl and chain or do you prefer power cord? I kind of go either way. I don't really care. Um, I like these. These aren't terribly hard to break. Uh, it's not going to easily break, but if your neck knife got snagged on something, you can, you can definitely break this if you, you jerk your head back quick enough or something. Uh, as opposed to paracord, where some people talk about, you know, safety. If you have a, a, you know, just a solid piece of paracord with no breaks in it or anything like that, and your neck knife gets caught on something, people worry about being choked or, or you know, yanked around. I've never had that happen. I've literally carried a neck knife for decades now. Um, so, not an issue for me, but if that's a concern for you, this would definitely be a safer option compared to paracord. Paracord uh, might be considered more comfortable, just depends on what you do with yours. I like to do a uh, kind of like two slip knots so that they can be adjustable. So I can adjust the length, like once it's on my neck, I can make it a little higher if I want to or lower, and I can still obviously take it on and off, which is important. Um, but uh, sometimes when I do that, the little knots, the balls that are on the actual line could be a little uncomfortable on the neck. It just depends. The ball and chain has never been uncomfortable for me. All right, but obviously, you know, if it gets cold in the winter, maybe it's cold in your neck. There's a lot of considerations as far as what type of cordage you use for your necklace, but I go on and off between ball and chain and power cord. They're totally fine. They both have their pros and cons. Not a big deal. I can kind of go either way. And of course, the sky is the limit. You can use anything for cordage, anything you want at all. Um, some people use leather. You don't have to use power cord. You can use tether cord or bank line, you know, smaller diameter cords. It's just whatever, whatever you got floating around, whatever, whatever floats your boat. You know, so let me know down in the comment section, what do you use for the necklaces for your neck knives if you choose to carry one? Uh, and as far as neck knives in general, I know people are either totally for it or totally against it. 
Some people, or I should say most people who carry neck knives carry them concealed. They don't like the attention. I am so used to it, it, it becomes like an ongoing joke. You know what I mean? When I meet new people and stuff and they're just staring down at my neck knife the entire time, like, hello, my eyes are up here. You know what I'm saying? So uh, especially, <laughs> especially uh, with, uh, with new people, they're just, uh, like I said, they're staring at it like, uh, I don't know, I have no pants on or something. It's, it's crazy. I mean, for me, it's just funny at this point, but for a lot of people, especially if you're new to neck knives and you carry them openly, it's a very new experience. It's kind of like if you open carried a gun or something, people just stare. They stare because they don't know what to make of you. Some people are scared of you. Some people are concerned, worried you're gonna do something bad because you have a knife hanging from your chest. It's just a tool, but not everyone thinks the same way. And a lot of people see that as strange because it's certainly not common to have a, a knife hanging around your neck. But again, for me, you know, two plus decades now of doing it, I'm just used to it. It's no big deal. But I do break the ice occasionally, and I'll mention it. I'll talk about it. If I see someone staring the whole time, I'm like, yeah, it's nice. You want to check it out? You know? And a lot of times they, they don't want to check it out, but when I take it out of the sheath and I show them, like, okay, I put it back. And at that point, I've now had the knife in my hand. Nothing bad happened. I put it back, and they feel, like, comfortable. They're just like, all right, you're weird. You just like to have a knife around your neck, but that's cool. Now we're over it. <laughs> so, anyway. That is all. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Take it easy.